have seen these little plasma cannons going around on the internet. They use a little propane. In this case, I'm using propene cylinder. And when you apply a little gas to the tube, and you press the piezo ignite, you get a pretty little green spark that goes around. Green with propene, blue with propane. If we give it a little bit more time, woo, you get a big boom out the end. But even with these neat little guns, you may have wondered the same thing I wondered, and that's, have we been thinking a little too small? So the best way to make a big gun, I think, is to make a little gun so that we could work out some of the problems here first. So I've just simply housed all the components of that gun uh, in the paint bucket here. We've got a little propane cylinder, propane this time instead, or propane instead of propane. This time I've gone back, so we'll have a blue flame if this works. And one of the things I found was very unreliable was the little piezoelectric starter that comes on the torches. At different flows of gas, the piezo would not work for igniting a spark. And getting the right flow of gas so that you have the right mixture of air and fuel for the maximum boom is absolutely critical. So I came up with a pretty crazy way, which I'll show you later on, to figure out exactly what your air fuel mix is to get your biggest boom out of the gun. And I think when we try the big gun, uh, that's gonna be a huge benefit. So we can give the little gun a try here. On this side, I've got a gas cylinder. We'll have to do it by sound because my markings, that sounds about right. My markings are not visible from inside the, the container here. And I've got a long cord, so we'll have a little bit of safety. I'm gonna step back and hopefully we get a little arc right there and it sets off our propane gun. So we'll just do a countdown. We'll go three, two, one. Whew. Yeah, that was a pretty good boom. Let's shut that gas off. All right, and I'm gonna make sure we can clear those gases out of there. There we go. Always be extra careful with your gun. I'm gonna turn off the igniter. <laughs> Just handle it like it was any other gun. Naturally, I, I posed this so I end up standing right in front of it after I, I get done saying that. But the most important thing is for our big gun, I wanted to make sure that pressure that's generated in a larger vessel was not too much for the gun. So I came up with an idea of just igniting the gases in the cylinder and seeing how the cylinder fared. I took a short length of tubing, I put a spark at the end of the tubing so I could ignite it, and I found out exactly why you should never do this. So here's a close-up of that spark ignition point. So I just had a couple of screws that I ran in either side of the tubing. Usually I'm using a vinyl hose and I connected that to a voltage multiplier that I got off of eBay. And those are typically used for stun guns. So that created a little arc inside much, much more reliable than the piezo element. So for testing that pressure vessel, let's get to a safe distance. Now I had almost 50 feet of wire between me and the detonation that we're about to create. So here's a slow-mo. Let's take a look at what that burning gas looks like. This is 120 frames per second. Okay, and once again, let's go ahead and we'll take that vessel into a darkened room so that we can really get a look at what the burn pattern's like and if we're stressing the cylinder or if there's any residual fire in there after that initial filing. So this is 180 frames per second. Well, so far we're batting a thousand. This looks really good, except for having some of my stuff positioned a little too close to it there. And this is why I found out you never use a short length of tubing. Flashback, you can see the flame climbing back in and the end of the hose catches fire. So this is something you don't see every day. This is me running towards a flame at 180 frames a second. It takes a long time for me to get there. And our plasma gun, the cha pressure chamber is burning. <laughs> all that time. So fire extinguishers on hand all the time. How do we fix this? So what went wrong? Well, I had a short length of tubing going into our pressure vessel here, and I actually had the spark at the end of the tubing. So when this was inside and we detonated that spark with the gas flowing through the tube, all I ended up doing was creating an extension for my torch and the flame stayed at the end sustained and that will certainly destroy a plasma gun. So that's the reason on the different plasma guns, which I hadn't realized until I did the test, uh, that you have a long length of tubing and a super long length of tubing seems like it would be desirable, but then the spark doesn't reliably reach the ignition point and a short length of tubing can create a torch 
where you have a sustained flame which will destroy this. So about five feet, five and a half feet is at least in my case with a three quarter inch tube what I found out to be reliable. So that when the spark travels from the torch up through the tube it clears the gases along the way, creates a single point of ignition and should extinguish itself. All that said, you definitely want to have a fire extinguisher when you do this kind of experiment. So as you turn the knob on the torch, you not only change the flow of gas, but you change the ratio of gas to air. And the ratio between the gas and the air is very important for getting the big pop at the end. So the trick I came up with was to simply run a spark through the tube and adjust the torch until you find the spark that travels the longest through the tube. That's going to be your correct air-fuel mixture. Okay, you can try a little spark. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more lesson. What not to do with a plasma gun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, one more time. Let's get a good look. This time we've got it bolted down. It's not going anywhere, I hope. And we should see this at 180 frames a second. The suspense builds, but I hope we're going to get a beautiful, beautiful discharge. So though I'm not encouraging anybody to build a plasma gun this big, and I definitely think there are lurking safety issues with this huge plasma gun, the noise from this gun is as loud as a gunshot going off. I'm told that the plastic in this gets stressed actually after multiple firings. So there are a lot of things to be concerned about. But just in case, just in case, uh, somebody out there decides they're interested in building a bigger plasma gun, I'm going to go ahead and put a web page up that shows some of the issues I bumped into and a step-by-step -step on how this particular gun works. So I'm saying, don't build it, but if you're going to build it, be safe. <laughs>